Hello and welcome to your daily dose of Satoshi's news. Today's day is Thursday the 18th of July 2024, the year of a million transactions per second or more. Experience the best of both worlds today at BetBitcoinSV.com, the best casino and sports betting on chain. Have a little flutter in private using the original protocol and genuine Bitcoin. Right. Let's see what we've got today. So we've got this article by the Law Society Gazette saying judge refers Bitcoin inventor to CPS over courtroom lies. Uh, again, just got more comments on that from uh, from Kurt. Reasons why we need Bitcoin. We've got Ursula van der Leyen being re-elected. We've got the launch of money. Got a little bit of 365 days of Bitcoin history. And then the usual charts, which we'll go over and have a look at. Right, that's what we've got in store for us today. Let's get into it. Like a cowboy in the west Riding on the blockchain that they call the very best One million strong, them transactions flying free Just wait for the chair and node, you'll surely see Right then, so uh, Judge refers a Bitcoin inventor to CPS over courtroom lies the, current, uh, the cryptocurrency entrepreneur whose false claims to be Bitcoin inventor, Satoshi Nakamoto, are unraveled after six weeks of court hearings earlier this year, uh, will be referred to the Crown Prosecution Service, the judge in the case revealed today. Uh, so the date of this was yesterday, This uh, that, uh, two days ago, it was on the 16th. In his latest judgment, the Crypto Open Patent Alliance versus Craig Stephen Wright, right, we'll just open that. There it is. We'll go back to that in just a minute. Justice Miller said that if what happened in the case does not warrant referral to the CPS, the Crown Prosecution Service, it is difficult to envisage a case which would. I have no doubt that I should refer the relevant papers in this case to the CPS for consideration of whether a prosecution should be commenced against Dr. Wright for his whole-scale perjury and forgery of documents and or whether a warrant for his arrest should be issued and or whether his uh, extradition should be sought from wherever he is now. All those matters are to be decided by the CPS. Businessman Stephen Matthews, who, while under the oath, told a barefaced lie that Wright had shown him a version of the seminal Bitcoin white paper more than a year before its publication, will also be referred, the judge said. In the 64-page judgment today, the judge also ruled on applications for uh, injunctions and claims for costs in two cases. He ordered Wright and his companies to make uh, interim payments of 85% and 90% of the total cost certi- of the total certified costs. However, he declined a request to order disclosure of Wright's funding arrangements, uh, noting that Wright's funders seem to be continuing to fund substantial costs in his side. He elected to give them the benefit of the doubt. Ruling on a raft of uh, other issues arising from the case, Miller granted injunctions uh, barring White from att- Wright from attempting to relitigate his claim. However, he found it disproportionate to order Wright to remove all published statements asserting his claim. He also found a demand from Wright to uh, publish a self-page notice in the Times setting out the court's findings as somewhat, vin- uh, as somewhat vindicative response. An application to dispense with personal service on the fu- uh, on uh, on the founds that right that should be grounds that right has left the jurisdiction is either deliberately evading service or um, the service or is very difficult to locate is fully justified. The judge ruled. The judgment also revealed that Wright had not made good uh, his stated intention to apply to the High Court for permission to appeal. While that does not pre- uh, preclude a direct application to the Court of Appeal, Mellor observed in uh, a case of complexity, the judge and first instance is often able to shed light on any proposed grounds for appeal. <clears throat> well, thing is, though, um, it wasn't a court, uh, and they're saying a, a ruling or his judgment. Well, that was just an opinion because there was there's no trial by jury there. Um, you know, and also his judgment, as we will see, uh, has not been signed or sealed. So just have a look at this. Look, that there at the top, that emblem, um, is just uh, an administration stamp. But as we go down to the bottom, look, there is no signature there. There's literally nothing there. There should be a signature. It should say signed. Justice Judge Miller, blah, 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 blah. It's not there. This is just... This is just This is nothing. There is nothing authorising this. And he won't ever authorise it either. Because if he did, it would be malfeasance in uh, in public office. I mean, it's just just absolutely outrageous. But we can see the part about uh, Stephen Matthews here. At point 201, I think it was. 
So I mean, they're trying to get them both done for perjury. Uh, yeah, they're in, they're in quite a serious situation here. Look at this, uh, 0.201. So far as Mr. Matthews is concerned, it is true, as Copa submitted that he has been a major player in Dr. Wright's campaign to establish himself as Satoshi for many years, and in that capacity has been a significant supporter and purveyor of that lie. However, I am concerned with the lies he made in his written witness statement, but most importantly, made his oral evidence in the witness box. His most significant lie was that he received a version of the Bitcoin white paper from Dr. Wright in August 2008. Well, well we've seen the white paper in, in August 2008, published on the Sands Institute. That would be the one that Craig showed him. Uh, one which he sought to maintain in cross-examination. This is a very important uh, prop for Dr. Wright's claim to be Satoshi. It was a barefaced lie, but also a highly cynical lie in view of the pers uh, prospective financial gain which Dr. Wright and those supporting him, including Mr. Matthews, stood to gain if Dr. Wright's claim to be Satoshi had been upheld. For these reasons, I consider I should refer Mr. Matthews' evidence to the CPS so they can consider whether he should also be prosecuted for perjury. That's absolutely ridiculous what's going on. You know, uh, that judge needs to be... Well, first of all, this order needs to be voided because there is no uh, signature on it and no seal. Um, and secondly, the judge needs to be done for a malfeasance in public office because uh, he's at least stating his opinion, you know. Uh, just... Uh, again, it's a very theatrical administration process. The evidence should have been submitted into court via postal mechanics, uh, and that's it. Job done. But uh, I just hope Craig is, Craig is playing a long game and he's got more uh, more arsenal and tools of ammunition in his belt uh, to uh, to come back with, yeah, metaphorically speaking. Uh, all right, and this was the um, uh, response from Kurt. He said, things that bugs me is this. One, he was doxxed by Wired and Gizmodo in 2015. The private email comms in this trial and others showed Craig and his PR people freaking out that the story was soon to be published. Two, there was so obviously no profit motive for his um, for this to be a scam. He and everyone involved has lost money and the notions that he was a champion were unpopular from the get-go. If you wanted to grift money from people, there are millions of ways to do this easily and he has taken the hard route at every turn. And again, uh, he couldn't really grift money or even come out and say he was Satoshi Nakamoto uh, until he had the Tulip Trust in his possession, which wasn't scheduled to be returned to him until the 1st of January 2020. And as we know, it was eventually returned to him on the 14th of January 2020. And then the Ira Climbing case uh, that concluded at the end of 2021 uh, found that he was the sole and rightful owner of the Satoshi coins. How crazy is this? Uh, three, a confidence man has a silver tongue and sells people on ideas that seem popular and profitable. Craig is not a good speaker. In fact, he's visibly uncomfortable on stage or in interviews, and has done nothing to uh, nothing but and has done nothing but criticise the investment thesis of Bitcoin and blockchain while encouraging people to scale the technology and build businesses while ignoring the price of all crypto assets. Yeah, ab absolutely. That's exactly what Craig has done. He's never asked anyone for any money. Or any funds whatsoever. You know, but we, we all know what's going on. Uh, and again, so check this out. So the Telegraph and out, or uh, said a, uh, published an article here saying, Council apologises after failing to count more than 6,500 general election votes. Wandsworth Council in South West London blames a spreadsheet issue, spreadsheet issue, for missing 6,558 votes in the Putney count. And again, this is why we need Bitcoin. So the data can't be cracked, hacked, altered, changed, or deleted, or lost uh, in this case. You know, crazy. Um, here we've just got an announcement that, uh, uh, what's her name? Ursula Vondelez. Is it Vandalan or something like that? Uh, yeah. Uh, von der Leyen is reinstalled as the uh, the United uh, uh, European Union regime show primo. She calls for creation of a European Defence Union. Again, more money on defences and all that, basically to uh, you know enslave the rest of humanity, which is what they want. So that's not really a good result for uh, anybody who believes in freedom. There, jeepers. We also have an article here by uh, Presswire saying uh, money launches a USD backed stablecoin on ERC20. Again, pfft, don't really want it on ERC20. How can you move it on ERC20? You know, uh, it's ridiculous unless you're just trading in and out of other shitcoins, maybe. 
Uh, however, it does say here that uh, the uh, money token will also be introduced on the highly scalable BSV blockchain, um, renowned for its zero confirmation speed, low mining fees and unparalleled scalability to support micro transactions. Each money token is redeemable for $1 and is fully collateralized with US Treasury bills, cash and stablecoin equivalents. Uh, really? That just should be cash. Really? Uh, we are thrilled to... Uh, stablecoin equivalents? What? Uh, we are thrilled to bring money to the Ethereum blockchain. Oh, great. In addition to the BSV blockchain, that's a good one. Uh, we will be expanding the stablecoin's accessibility across various blockchain platforms, starting with BSV. Uh, stated... Uh, Svaga Rigas, that's um, FCO of money, as a licensed and regulated custodian and issuer of digital assets in uh, Antigua, money undergoes regular or, uh, money undergoes regular audits and provides attestations of reserves, ensuring full transparency for its users. Diverse use cases for money stablecoin money supports a wide range of use cases, including peer-to-peer -peer payments across border remittances, payment settlements, and integration with Web3 applications. Money can also be acquired over the counter at a prominent OTC platform such as Enigma and uh, FRNT Financial. The company is currently in discussions with several liquidity providers to further enhance distribution and adoption. We admire Money's visions for developing a stable uh, stable coin specializing in microtransactions and micro fees use cases, remarked Michael Halimi from uh, uh, Enigma. Uh, we're excited to see the stable coin start on ERC20 and evolve onto other blockchains such as BSV that support the microtransaction model. Awesome. That's something to look forward to. Let's get into a little bit of Bitcoin history here today. So we are now the 18th of July. Oh, we know. Uh, check this out. So on the 18th of July 2010, the first large-scale Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin exchange, Mt. Gox, made its appearance. Mt. Gox opens for business. The value of uh, the Bitcoin was just like seven cents. Uh, value within 10 days later was uh, six cents. Jeb McCaleb, a programmer best known for creating the successful eDonkey peer-to-peer network in 2000, announces the launch of Mt. Gox, a new full-time Bitcoin exchange based on a prior abandoned project of McCaleb's to create an online exchange for Magic the Gathering cards. He soon struggles to keep up with the demands of the business and sells MountGox.com to Mark Capellas on March 6, 2011. Mt. Gox was slowly grow to dominate the world of Bitcoin, trading over the next three years. Oh my goodness, that was huge. Good grief. I mean, that would have, that would have been an exciting product, project to get involved in right at the beginning. You know, of Bitcoin. I mean, jeepers. You know, gutted that it went the way that it did. But, you know, we know the powers of beer trying to sabotage everything. Let's have a quick look at Bitcoin talk here. What's all, what's all this about? Hi, everyone. I just opened up a new Bitcoin exchange. Please let me know what you think. Oh, no, yeah. So that was Mt. Gox. Dot com. Your trading mechanism seems to favour those buying Bitcoins at the uh, expense of those selling. I'm not certain, but I believe that Bitcoin markets take the average between the high, uh, high uh, bid and the low ask while you're setting the price at the low ask. This is not necessarily a bad thing, but I did want to point it out. <clears throat> Problems for the very beginning. What's this? What the F? Um, use hashes for uh, transmitting and saving passwords. And by the way, I can't log in. Sorry to say that, but uh, until now, your exchange service is just password uh, rip a password ripoff service. Oof. Problems from the very beginning. Wow. Wow. But also on the 18th of July, oh, well, after that, uh, 2014, uh, Dell accepts Bitcoin. Founder Michael Dell announces on Twitter that Dell.com now accepts Bitcoin. Uh, that was 2014. Customers in the United States only can purchase any product listed on Dell's online marketplace using Bitcoin. All Bitcoin transactions are to be handled by Coinbase in a Bitcoin payment um, a Bitcoin payment processor. At a yearly revenue of $56 billion, Dell um, becomes the largest company to accept Bitcoin. This announcement follows a number of other major online retailers' acceptance of the Bitcoin payments in 2014. Wow. That's, that was huge. I know they, they got into it as early as 2014. And Bitcoin, what, um, network started 2009. 
and here in 2010, 2011, 2012, 2013, 2014. So it just goes to show you, you know, um, how fast it actually took off, really. But, I mean, pfft, uh, BSV has now been around since, what, since the hash war? 15th of November 2018. We're now 2024. It's six years. Six years I've been in BSV. The genuine Bitcoin. You know, it's exciting because we've got uh, Terranode coming on finally in December. You know, and all the drama that's been around it. But jeepers. What a roller coaster it has been, I should say. Right, let's have a quick run down the figures. Oh, $46 on uh, Coin Dance here. Um, going up slowly. <clears throat> Transactions down to 9.4. Block size 23.58. Let's have a look at them coming through. Again, nothing special right now because all the focus is on Craig and the court case and stuff. It's 84,000 times cheaper to transact on Bitcoin than CoreCoin. 41% uh, comparable loss. Uh, mining Bitcoin than core coin. Uh, let's have a look at this. Let's have a look at the politics. This where all this is all this is what you need to be looking at. Uh, global hash rate seven days. Global hash rate twenty four hours. Core coin hash rate other miners two point seven. Uh, B crash fifty two point zero eight. Uh, this this looks weird. Look at this. So we've got Fisher Price Cash. So we've got solopool.org with now seventy one point three five percent. Of the hash rate on there. Wow. And Bitcoin. So we'll just cross reference that with what's on chain. Again, uh, Coindar's not, not, not giving us the full truth here. But look at this. Uh, ta um, tau uh, being squeezed here down to 40%. Couve with 29. And QD link up to 24. Something's going on. Some somebody somebody is somebody is upping their hash rate. Oh, in fact, let's just let's just have a quick look. Oh, I would expect the hash rate to be going up there. Uh, maybe maybe um, yeah, because this only goes to oh yesterday, seventeenth. Uh, maybe that will show tomorrow. So we'll have a look back then. But um, it looks to me like one of the miners is increasing their um, increasing their hash rate. Interesting. Uh, crypto quant. Yep. So the uh, exchanges, their reserves, they're still cashing out of BTC. Uh, Tether weather. Let's have a look at the market. Oh, my goodness me. So what's this? Another one. Another load gone in. So 13.2 billion up to 13.6 so another 400 million has gone in just today. Look at that. 400 million today. 400 million yesterday. There was another like half a billion gone in the day before. Jeepers. So that's that's basically almost like one and a half billion there uh, in three days. Um, trying, to, trying to keep the market alive. Uh, oh, USDC. Look at the demand going up on that. Uh, nothing special to report then on the... On the market cap. Uh, longs and shorts, so very misguided. Uh, BSV still second in wallet. I'll have to check that. So it's um, 58,464,462 uh, wallets have been created. Uh, let's have a look at this. So this is Bitcoin versus CoreCoin. Oh, seeing a rally right now. Up and up and up. In the last seven days, or um, 11, 12 days now. It's interesting, it's interesting to look at, just to sort of uh, keep a track on these things, really. That's also on, uh, also against the uh, USD. Very good. Uh, so, the orange gateway. Uh, let's have a look at the... Um, USD, are we seeing the same thing? Oh my goodness me, look, there's been another uh, another flash crash there against USD, wiping out <coughs> wiping out traders speculating against USD. Look at that, that is outrageous. Is there something wrong with their system? Good grief. But it looks like we've had a... Um, that's actually reporting price gone down. Uh, let's just check back... And compare compare that. Oh, 
Oh yeah, there we go. So that has just that has just come down. Hmm. It's just gone down. But what was that against? Oh right, yeah, yeah. There we go. It's showing now. So I went up there against BTC and then came back down again. Hmm. Let's have a look in 30 minutes. Oh, that's a, oh, that's a 15 minute chart. All right then. Let's do 15 minutes then. All right, yeah. So gradually gone up and up and up and just gone down a bit. Hmm. Very interesting, very interesting. Let's have a look at um, live coin watch then. So we've got a market cap 2.3 trillion. 2.3 trillion. Uh, 24 hour trade volume just 1.8. Again, look, bids and asks, very similar. <clears throat> that won't be the same on Bitcoin because we know what's going on. They are fudging the figures. Let's have a look. Look at that. So again, they, they think they've got uh, 4 million asks against 1.1 million bids. It just doesn't make it just it doesn't add up. Doesn't add up at all. I think these charts are absolute BS. Absolute BS. Because it, it's um oh, ups and downs over the last twenty four hours. But it's generally up on the week. Yeah, I think that's uh I think that's rubbish. Let's have a look at the uh, leaderboard here. So yeah, very nice. Best bet $153. A return on investment, 81.95%. Loving that. Right, there we go. We'll leave it there. That's a 20-minute show. Hope you enjoyed it. As ever, if you enjoyed these updates, please ding your donations for your appreciation to Satoshi at Sempi, Handcash, Simply Cash, Relasia, Rock Wallet, and Senti.ch. Hope you enjoyed it. As ever, be aware, take care, stay safe out there, and we'll see you in the next one.